Hello everybody, welcome to Meteorology. This is Mr. Ajero, and uh, I wish I could be there with you, but uh, unfortunately that's not the way things worked out this year. Uh, my, meteorology has been my passion since I was about six years old. I was at a friend's birthday party. We had to go inside the garage for a thunderstorm. All of a sudden, the storm ends, we open up the garage and there's about five inches of hail on the ground. So that was it for me. That sold me on meteorology. I've been in love with it ever since. I spent most of my childhood three to five hours a day watching the Weather Channel. I was picked on a lot for it, especially by my brothers, but to be honest, when something is your passion, you don't really care what other people say. So that being said, about seven years ago, I went and got my degree in meteorology from Mississippi State University, and it's what I work on every day. I sit on my computer for hours trying to make graphics. Uh, I have a green screen in my basement that I make forecasts on, and it's really just a great time. Now, you're not going to be able to get all that information this year, but what you have to realize is that when a forecast is made for your area, you could go right now online, you could go onto the TV, you could go onto a weather app and find out what your forecast is, but you have to realize in a lot of cases those are for maybe the nearest big city you don't always get a forecast that's meant right for your backyard so you may hear that there's a 40 percent chance of rain but what does that really mean does that mean that if it rains out on your party outside or on your uh, picnic does that mean that they were wrong because they said there was only a 40 percent chance got a plane flying by here so i'll wait a second or you know, does it mean they were right because they said there is a chance of rain and it rained? Well, the thing is, there's a lot more to it than that. You have to be able to be good forecasters on your own. You have to be able to be, uh, be able to look at the sky and determine what might be coming your way. So if you hear that there's a 20% chance of rain, but you see dark cumulonimbus clouds approaching you from the west, chances are that 20% chance is likely to hit your area. That being said, a lot of people think that it's sunny outside, it's not going to rain. Well, that's again, not true at all. As a matter of fact, a lot of times sunshine could help lead to cloud development and rain. So hopefully for the first part of your course, what you might get into the habit of doing is going outside. Really, that's where weather is red. You want to go outside, you want to look at the sky, make some observations. We just picked up a really nice uh, weather station that hopefully we'll be putting up for you very early in the school year on the roof. and. Uh, you're going to get some observations from that weather console in your classroom as well. And the goal is to see what types of conditions go with what types of weather. So what do you notice when the weather console reads high pressure? What is high pressure? What is low pressure? What numbers would validate the pressure being either high or low? What do you see outside when the pressure is low? Is it cloudy? Is it sunny? Is it raining? Is it one one day and something else the next? Those are the types of things that you're going to try to put together because science is often taught in the classroom. We try to get you to learn all these things, but really the real science and the real knowledge, the real learning happens outside, especially when we're talking about the atmosphere and weather. So that being said, you're going to want to get outside for your class. You're going to want to look at the sky, but not just look at the sky. You're going to want to take notes. You're going to want to say, this is what the sky looks like right now. This is what the numbers say on our weather console right now. And this is what's happening. This is what we're seeing. And don't just focus on what's happening that day. You want to focus on what happens the next day and the next day. So does a pressure drop mean you're going to get rain? Does it mean you're going to get sun? And does it mean it's going to happen right away or is it coming down the road? Also clouds. Clouds tell you a bunch of different things. Just this morning I saw very thin, wispy-like, feather-like clouds in the sky. And now those clouds have gotten a little bit thicker and a little bit lower. Well, all these clouds tell you something different. And the goal is to start writing down what types of clouds you see, get used to the names of these cloud types, and then start deciding what weather are you noticing happens on the day that you see these clouds, the day after you see these clouds, maybe even two days after, and try to start putting something together with the data you gather. So that's hopefully gonna be how you spend some of your time early in the first semester, seeing what's actually happening, putting it together with your own two eyes, doing some options observational uh, data gathering and putting something together, really coming up with a hypothesis for what different types of clouds are trying to tell you. And again, the better forecaster you are just by looking at the sky, the less likely you are to find yourself in a tough situation some point down the road. So have a good day, have a good first week, get some data, get some observations, and maybe go online and share some of those. Talk to you soon.